Okay, so I just want to show you how I glue this weather strip without gluing it to the brick facade here. See this weather strip right here I'm putting in? This is number 292 right angle. I like to use 292 and 291 lots of. I, I, I use quite a bit of it when I do roof structures and, you know, just trim and corner cleanup and so on. So I want this to fit nice and tight against this facade, but this roof comes off. So this has to be able to come away. So notice how I put parchment paper. Now this is something that you should have in your kit as well. Sheets of parchment paper. Wax paper works too, but I find parchment paper to be a little bit better when it comes to glue. It doesn't pick up wax and stuff and get on your model. But anyway, um, so I got a sheet of parchment there. It's squeezed in there, right? So what I'm doing is, is I'm taking just, you know, about an inch or two at a time, just like this. And then I'm putting it in like that. And I'm pressing in tight up against the brick wall, okay, just so that right angle sets up good, nice and tight against that parchment paper, because that parchment paper is going to allow me to peel this roof away, and I'll have a nice clean line there. So when I paint it and I slide the roof back in, it'll have a nice clean line, okay? Okay, so now that this is all done now, you can see I used 291 here, 291 all around here, and then 292. Why 292? Why not the same as here? Well, I like the smaller profile, but I found that by the time this roof line lined up to the brick, uh, there, was, there was a big enough gap here where I wanted to make sure that the brick and the gap between the white styrene behind this wouldn't show. So this is just a little bit taller, so it just cleans it up a little bit more and gives you a little bit of a tolerance there in case the roof goes a little bit deeper or sits doesn't seat totally right, and you'll see that brick there. So I want it to look like a weather strip, right? So here I'll show you how it comes apart now. So now I can go like this, pull this out like that, okay? Now watch all this come apart here. See? Okay, and then this comes off. So now this is like a model now, this roof, see? But the beauty, okay, so why all the work? Well, I'll show you. So I'm going to peel this off, this parchment paper. And then this is magnetized, right? So I'm just going to pop that off, see? Those are spacers that I just had in there because I wanted to keep it straight, like in level. These I can glue in later just so I don't get any roof sag here. So now I'm going to be able to... Uh, cut holes now. I'll, I'll just drill small holes and put the square LEDs over top of them, but they'll be stuck to this. And then it'll just come down like that, like a sandwich. And the LED won't be touching the plastic because these two magnet blocks are, are twice the thickness of the LED. The LED squares the thickness of one of these. So you're still going to have a good uh, one eighth inch away from the plastic so the LED doesn't touch the plastic, okay? Okay, how's everybody doing? So before I jump into this little tutorial on how to do a a tar paper style roof in HO scale or N or O. It's all relative to the same thing if you just use different dimensions and increments. Um, I just want to point out a couple of photos that I got off of Google Images. Okay. Now, I wish I knew the modeler that did this uh, because I don't, like, I just got it off Google Images. There was no name or anything. So please forgive me, whoever you are, this is a superb model. Like it's part of an older brick, 30s period or so, maybe 40s of a brick here you can see in the beautiful roof. I mean, it's just it's a stunning model, really. Uh, so whoever you are, if you recognize it, please forgive me, but I mean to give you credit. And, yet, and if you do see this, feel free to comment down below because it's a wonderful photograph and model for inspiration, even for the likes of me and many others, I'm sure. Now, um, what I just want to talk to you about basically is like, so this is a, maybe an older style tar paper roof. You can see a lot of the nail or the tacks that were used. Okay, and then this is a more 
recent one. This is more of a, a uh, shingle style rollout. Tar sh shingle, sort of tar, um, not paper, but it's a, it's a type of tar, um, like the shingles, you know, on uh, common shingles on residential houses, that. And then there's some flashing here, or I'm not sure if that's aluminum flashing. It might even be a type of shingle as well. So you're going to see, like, if you were to fly over old New York or Chicago or any major city in the U.S. or even Canada, for that matter, you would see roofs like this still in existence. In fact, I lived in an apartment, rooftop uh, apartment, many years ago, like I think in the late 80s, early 90s. And it, when you came out the back, there was a porch built on here and you could go right out onto the roof and it looked just like this, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. And then, of course, the rooftop details like grill uh, vents, right? Uh, this was a fly, uh, leftover from my warehouse. I just added a little bit of dowel like 25,000 dollars, just to add a little sort of aluminum style or stainless style uh, weatherproof uh, grill vent, right? And then of course the air conditioner, like these kind of things, you know, look really cool when they go on models, don't they? I think we overlooked that a lot. Maybe that person added this eventually, I don't know, but okay. Okay, so tar paper roof time. So um, what I want to do is show you this method that I'm going to use for the diner roof. Now, there's many methods you can use out there. I'm aware of a lot of them. And they're all relative to the scale, mostly primarily scale, because scale, like a lot of textures will cross over different scales, like NHOO, for example, depending on what the one-to-one -one scale texture is in the real world. And that happens with subjects too, right? Like uh, I think I've mentioned before about air conditioners. I mean, you can use a HO scale air conditioner on an O scale model or vice versa if they're industrial, residential, et cetera, et cetera. Everything, you know, every size of a particular subject can be um, fudged in, so to speak, uh, in certain situations. But with this situation, I want to try to simulate tar paper roof, okay, four feet wide, probably 16 foot rolls is what they are, okay, uh, there may be longer, I'm not a roofer, uh, even though I tried it once many years when I was young and foolish, but <laughs> when I was tw 20 years old, I tried it and lasted a month, I think, um, I'm going to use two-ply toilet paper here. Now, first, I'll show you how I cut it, okay? Okay, tar paper roof time. So you can see that I've just taken some two-ply toilet paper. This is good for HO scale, and it's just one of many ways of doing a tar paper roof. There's many different ways, especially in O. You can use paper towels, and I've even, even used uh, sandpaper, like wet and dry sandpaper, and masking tape, too. But this is HO, and HO requires a finer texture. So what I've done here is I've just marked with increments here. See, every four feet on the ruler here, HO scale, every just marks right here. And then all I'm doing is, is I'm making some light lines. I'm going to cut this with scissors because if you try to do it with a knife, I mean, you can if the knife is brand new, super sharp, but you're going to get lots of tearing. So this is a little bit of a delicate operation, but it's worth it because uh, you end up with some uh, nice four foot uh, wide rolls of tar paper that you can cut to whatever length you like, whatever the standard length is. I think it's usually 16 feet. So you can do that as well if you like to show the seams. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to cut these out. Helps to have a long pair of scissors. Okay, so this is what I end up with, is these uh, two-ply strips, okay? 
And it helps to have a soft, a very soft brush for this. And I'll tell you why. If you use a stiffer brush, like shorter, will make it usually stiffer, depending on the bristle. But notice the length of this one, right? This is a, called a half inch broad or flat, okay? And it's a synthetic brush, mostly used for watercolor, okay? And or acrylics. And the reason why I like it is it doesn't agitate the toilet paper too much. Like it's gonna tear sometimes and it's gonna wrinkle up, which is what you want, but you don't want it to just be some lumpy, torn up, wrinkled mess. You want some consistency in the rolls, um, you know, to look like it's actually been rolled out tar paper. And I find a softer brush works really well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use straight matte medium. Once again, I love matte medium. This whole routine is water-based and there's no acute health issues. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no toxic atmosphere around any of it and when you're hovering over your model bench for eight hours a day sometimes or four hours in an evening believe me in the long run you'll notice the difference over solvent based paints and glues etc i'm going to use straight matte medium because i don't want to wet this too much if you wet toilet paper you know what happens right it just falls apart so what i'm going to do is I'll just lay some right here on, on this strip right here, is just drop in a couple of blobs, okay? And then I'm just gonna spread it out. And I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so I just spread out the matte medium straight from the bottle. And then I'm just going to take this strip, whatever way you find convenient. And I'm going to just lay it on. I'm going to overlap it over this other uh, strip that's laid on here, which is like a kind of a, a uh, a two by eight profile. And then I'm just going to dab on just gently over top because you want to saturate the toilet paper mostly if you can and don't worry about the wrinkles because that's going to form on its own Okay, so uh, I'm going to paint this roof now, the tar paper roof. So this has already been um, covered with tissue, as I pointed out. With the matte medium, it's had a full 48 hours to dry. I just want to mention to you about matte medium and some of the, you know, the uh, the gels and so on, the, the acrylic gels and mediums, not the paint. Um, I've noticed people using it sometimes on channels and there was some mention of, you know, oh, it doesn't sand well. It does sand well. You just haven't let it dry long enough. You got to let acrylic, any gel or matte medium or anything, you got to let it dry at least a week to cure. There's a wet time and then there's a tacky time and a dry time and a cure time, right? So, so, so before you can actually sand, because it has a sort of a rubbery, kind of texture to it, which I like because I can peel it away if I want or whatever, and it'll last forever, furthermore. Um, but if you want to sand it, especially the, the texture pastes and so on, you got to let them dry for a week. They sand perfectly well and create dust just like wood. Okay, if you try to sand too early, even prior to 48 hours, you're going to roll it off. It'll start to catch and roll. Okay, and I'll show you that later on when I'm doing the site prep when I'm doing the new concrete surface, actually asphalt surface for this model to sit on. You'll see how I've used different crackle, uh, crackle paste, texture paste, etc., to create all kinds of effects with acrylic paint. So the acrylic paint I'm using here obviously is 
uh, Vallejo Air. Once again, I don't shoot it through the airbrush. I use it with water. In this case, I'm going to use a number eight round brush. And I'm going to build up five colors. But I'm not going to, like wet on, like I'm going to apply each color wet on wet, meaning water and then color like a wash right on the surface. And then I'm going to let it dry completely. Now, it doesn't have to cure. Just dry f like 10 minutes, 5, 10 minutes as fast as it dries whenever the water evaporates. And then I'm going to play around with some of these sand colors. And then I'm going to go with the wash with these darker grays, which are kind of a blue gray, OK? So the first color is 71.044 gray, OK? The two sand colors, and this is subjective, is 71.075 sand ivory and 71.141 IDF sand gray. Okay, you get sand from the wind and the rain and weather that builds up on tar paper roofs. That's, that's the reason behind that. There'll be hints of that in here. And then the dark sea gray, which I've used quite a bit, 71.053, which I find puts a nice wash okay in and amongst the texture of the tissue and these previous colors it goes well with it and then i'll probably finish with this dark gray blue and why i mean they look almost identical right don't they but i'll tell you why with the dark gray blue number 71054 so the blue in here like leaves a kind of a gray residue like i don't know if you can see it but it's in between there um like after the dark sea gray, then I put the blue gray, and you can see when it dried with water, it leaves this gray fade that's really hard to achieve otherwise. I mean, there's other ways of doing it, but it does it for you, though. That's the beauty of Vallejo paints, I find, if you get into weathering, and the more you use them, you begin to realize, like you might want to even take notes, that this color does this when I lay it on top or whatever, because the effects that you can achieve with these colors are remarkable, really. But that comes with practice and, and experience, becoming familiar with them, right? So what I'm going to do first is, is I'm just going to wet down this area, pre-wet it. You can spray it if you want. I'll probably have to do this again because of the studio lights. dries things remarkably fast here. Um, uh, believe me, you won't see me shivering or shaking from the cold. <laughs> when you have studio lights on you, you practically need an air conditioner blowing on you. Okay, so there's some water. And then I'm just going to take this. It's been shaken up good. And I'm just going to put some drops on like that. Okay. And I like to do that because I like to see what it does. Like, isn't that neat? Like, you know, like you can see the the nature of the paint. And also, you can start to see uh, the texture. See that from the tissue paper and the matte medium, you know, that hardened it? So that did all that on its own, right? Just by, you know, applying it with the brush. So this is kind of a base filter or wash. Similar to a pin wash, right? But this is one of, uh, in this case, five layers that is going to show through as a filter underneath some of the darker layers. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, add this sort of final paint segment uh, regarding the roof because it's not finished yet, but, you know, we achieve this look through layers, right? Paint a layer, put it aside, work on something else, come back. That's, I mean, that's the way I do it, but it's different for everybody, I guess. But, you know, I don't 
do things in one go. I mean, it's like the whole layout too. Like all the previous work on section one that I've done on River Road is I'm going to go back and revisit and do more layers. I, I've, there's so much detail. I haven't even done any detail passes yet. So when we want to achieve detail on any part or model, it requires the same approach. Okay. Now you know that I've laid on layers here roughly and then what I did was is I had a little bit more extra of this tissue strips okay and then I just laid them on and just dabbed them in with some matte varnish I really like this well I like the convenience of this for doing small models matte varnish I find the Vallejo just with a traditional brush it, like these like the gloss the semi uh or satin and matte work really well and they're like an acrylic resin right 100 percent acrylic resin so they're pretty much foolproof except with these make sure you pop the the lid off and then pop this out just to wiggle it back and forth pull it out and, and get a brush down in the bottom and stir up all that chalk or whatever that is that they use as a matte medium so to suspend in the varnish and give it a good shake and it, and it works flawlessly like I really like it and it's a type of adhesive as well because it's a resin and I find it's nice because it disappears and you can see where I laid in these patches so now I can come in there with you know uh, basically some washes gray washes tar papery kind of colors right and in this case, these are just both blue grays. This is dark gray blue, and this is intermediate blue. It's just nice to have these paints on hand, isn't it? All right. Okay, and then uh, I'm just going to dab in where the patches have gone. To suggest recent work and it might even be um, lighter it might be lighter tar paper right we don't know so Okay, so I want to show you the final detail that I want to put on this roof, the roof of good fortune, as they say. So I made this little template. I drilled little uh, holes in it. I don't know, two mil holes or 1.5. Depends on the scale or the look that you want. And then it's just a 10 thou plastic sheet. And then I put a mark under at the end of each strip. Each strip that you see, I put a little pencil mark and then a little arrow here so I can line up. Because you want to have these little rivets or tacks, roofing tacks, tar paper tacks, whatever you call them, uh, to line up good, okay? I'm just going to spray this with the airbrush. Now, here's a sample that I did. And you can see I tried a couple different colors. It's sort of rust. And this is buff. So it depends on the roof, right? You know, there's probably a thousand different looks, you know, to each individual roof. But generically, though, I want to simulate some kind of a tack. So you can see the rust color here. It's very faint. Like, I don't think it should be too much like this. Like, this looks too symmetrical and, like, it just doesn't... I mean, it might work. It depends on the roof. You know, it's hard to tell with this sample, right? But that's up to the individual once again, you know. Maybe it was a repaired section with new galvanized tacks. I don't know. Some the more modern tacks are usually a blue kind of gray color, and of course, the old galvanized would rust like that. I mean, that's what I saw. I lived on a rooftop apartment years ago, and I, I remember looking at it because I was always one to look at things and remember, you know, what things look like the color and stuff. It was just the way I was or am or whatever. But so, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rust color, and then I'll just show you how I do that. And that'll pretty much finish this up. But I'm not going to flat coat this after I do it, though, because I like the way this turned out. Okay?
Okay, so there you can see. Now there's this rusty tax there, right? That looks pretty cool, I think. And it's enough that you won't really, <clears throat> excuse me, notice it. But if you come in close to look at the air conditioner or a little detail that draws you in, then it might be something there just in support of that sort of visual experience. Okay?